Yo, what is going on? How's everyone doing today, man? It's a pipe day. It's mock draft day. It's not Monday, but hey, let's shake things up a little bit. Mock Wednesday. And I also got a little motivated. Hey, I saw Bangle and Broshmo come out with a mock draft. I'm so hyped. I've been waiting for it for so long. I'm only through 10 picks so far. I just say, I got to take a break. I got to go do a mock draft myself. I was pumped up, but it's already dope. I can't wait to finish the rest of that. Go check it out if you haven't. But hope you guys are having a good day and everything like that. Let's get on to this mock draft which I'm going to shake things up a little bit because, you know, why not, right? You know, why not? Uh, I'm going to do a no trades mock draft. And also, we're live comment today. That's right. We're live drafting, which I want to do a live draft. And then maybe next week we do template drafts. Kind of just switch things off because I like doing both. I think they're both fun. They're both unique. Give you some, you know, give me something creative, something different to do because I think it's unique to find a, a different possibilities that we can shake and bake with uh, Talladega Nights. But on to this draft itself at the number one overall pick and the Chicago Bears are on the clock and we can't trade, which I do think there's going to be a lot of people uh, calling up to try to get the trade, you know, to get Bryce Young or Will Levis, who knows, right? The rumors going out there, they're circulating, that's for sure. They're starting earlier and earlier each year. But for me, Chicago Bears, you got, if you're locked in at this number one overall pick, it's you go take the best available player, especially on the defensive line, right? In the conversation, do you take Bryce Young? I've taken Bryce Young number one overall, I believe, in every single mock draft. As I accidentally had the CPU on all the picks. Oh, hey, that would make my job really easy. Just let the CPU do all the picks. Just like, oh, I see how you roll. <laughs> that would be kind of funny, actually. <laughs> just, let, just let the CPU pick it. That way I don't have to do anything. <laughs> but no, we are here. We're serious. We're locked in. And for the Spares pick we're going back I, I've taken Bryce Young in every single one of my mocks the number one overall pick I don't think they go quarterback I think you got Justin Fields you continue to build around him the lack of talent and what he's been able to show with that it's like hey if we can have somewhat of a decent roster they've got a lot of money go get yourself some defensive help or the best available player and that to me Jalen Carter you can't go wrong either way though I just think improving that your team in general with a stud is going to be really, really important. And we're back also with the TDN mock draft simulator. So I don't know. It's kind of interesting. They're shaking it up. They put this thing down on the bottom, which I don't know. It's kind of, we'll, we'll have to go back and forth with it. Still trying to experiment, figure these things out here. I'm not the most technically savvy person. On to the Houston Texans, though, here at number two overall. This is an easy one for me, Bryce Young. We'll kind of fly through these first ones. Hey, they would be, I'd be dancing if I was Houston, Nick Asario and Demeco Ryan's getting themselves Bryce Young. Not even have to trade up would be so sick and you get your quarterback of the future Bryce Young I don't care if he's a midget or whatever you know my views on him on to number three yeah, I know people uh, coming out here on socials oh he's this girl who's five foot two and she's right next to his size I can't understand this people keep criticizing him so much for his size but go and watch the film it's unbelievable uh, I mean, he's got some flaws, don't get me wrong, but there's always, it seems like there's always something with every single quarterback prospect. You can go back to like Joe Montana days and uh, Peyton Manning, you know, they said, oh, Peyton Manning doesn't have the arm strength or whatever, right? Joe Montana, he doesn't have the arm strength, all those things. There's always something. Uh, on to the Arizona Cardinals here, number three overall, no doubt about it. Arizona, you're in a position, just take the best available player. You need talent on your roster. You're in a little bit of a mini rebuild and Will Anderson, I'm not ready to go Tyree Wilson over. I, Will Anderson's been an absolute stud in the SEC at Alabama for several years in college. Production up the wazoo. The guy is a monster. I'm taking him. On to the Indianapolis Colts here. And if you're locked in at this pick, and I, I think this is something that I'm surprised more people aren't talking about, is why is Anthony Richardson not being talked about more with Will Levis, right? Because to me, these guys... If I have to shake, and this is my rankings, I mean, I have Bryce Young 1, I have Anthony Richardson 2, I have CJ at 3, and Will Levis at 4. And I do think people are being a little too hard on Will Levis. The media and uh, the you know the YouTube community, or should I say the fans and the YouTube community really hate Will Levis. And I get why, right? The, 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 uh, the tape is not there, but the talent, he definitely has the talent. If he's got the work ethic... He'll definitely, he has a shot. There's no doubt about it. But for me personally, I look at Anthony Richardson and I see a guy who is even younger and a, a dude that has tools up the wazoo, even maybe more than Will Levis. I think his arm strength is right there, if not stronger. I think his athletic profile and build is better than Levis. So yeah, and, and some of the things, the encouragement with the development of Anthony Richardson, I'm more you know, encouraged by that. 
it really comes down to CJ Stroud and some of these other guys. Again, all three different prospects. Depends what you're looking for. But I go back and I just say Anthony Richardson's my guy. I just think Anthony Richardson, if you're looking to take a quarterback, just take a chance. You know, everyone says, well, oh, uh, it's going to take two to three years with Anthony Richardson. It takes two to three years with any quarterback. You typically are taking two to three years, and a lot of times it takes four. And if you're taking a quarterback that's just okay, then you're going into that fourth, fifth year, and you're like, uh, Daniel Jones, do we give him the 30, 40 million? He wants to be paid more than Patrick Mahomes now. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just going big. I'm going big or go home. If he doesn't work out, I'm moving on and I'm trying to, you know, go out and get another quarterback or whatever. But I just want to take a quarterback who I think can be one of the top guys in the NFL. And that to me is Anthony Richardson. So I'm going to take a shot, man. That's what I do. That's what I think that a team could do. It's like you got to develop them anyway along their career. I think Anthony Richardson utilizes his legs in his first season as he continues to develop as a passer more. And he can be Justin Fields in his rookie season. On to the Seattle Seahawks at number five overall. Will Gino resign? Rumors circulating out there that Tampa Bay, he's interested, right? What is the former coach going over there to Tampa Bay? Let's keep an eye out on that, right? Maybe maybe Seattle will be in the market for a quarterback here shortly. It's possible, right? Pete Carroll might say to himself, you know what? I like CJ Stroud. I like I like Will Levis. Keep an eye out on that. And you know what? I think it's a real possibility. I do. And do we experiment with that in this mock draft? I'm going to, man, because I, I think there's a serious possibility Geno Smith does does look at that. I still think second, third round quarterback is where they go, and I think Geno Smith will end up being re-signed, but I'm going to shake it up a little bit. I'm going to go after C.J. Stroud here for the Seattle Seahawks, taking a quarterback at that number five overall pick. I think it's very unlikely, but what if Geno does leave? Then you're left with yourself saying, hey, we got to go get a quarterback in this draft class. I think C.J. Stroud's a day one starter for them and someone who, uh, you know, hey, if he can continue to develop his processing ability and get better under pressure and he show more athleticism like he has in that Georgia game, you can be a franchise quarterback for you. On to the De- uh, Detroit Lions here at number six overall. I, I, you know, I go cornerback, and I think cornerback is their biggest need. So at the end of the day, I think in grabbing one of these corners is a really nice idea. I go Devin Witherspoon, I go Christian Gonzalez, Joey Porter Jr. Those are the those are the guys to go with, right? Pick which one you want. That's really what it is, and we're going to continue that trend because I think cornerback is such a big area of need. And I'm going to go after Christian Gonzalez here to the Detroit Lions. I think he's an absolute monster and. Uh, Dude, just continue to work on his ball skills, and I think he could be a number one corner in the NFL for a very long time. On to the Raiders here, number seven overall, Aaron Rodgers. Will they get Aaron Rodgers? A very, very good question. I'm going for this one since I go and draft a lot of quarterbacks for the Raiders. I'm going to say they go out and they get Aaron Rodgers, or they get a quarterback in free agency, maybe Jimmy G. So they maybe because look. Josh McDaniel is probably saying, hey, I got I to gotta win right away. If not, I'm, you know, Redbeard out here. I'm in trouble. So maybe they go after a different position because they get the quarterback addressed in free agency, which in case for me, you're looking at either like interior defensive line corner, I think could be a definitely possibility for them. And there's some guys on the board. Offensive line for sure is another possibility. I think that could be somewhere they go after. Uh, I'm actually going to go after a corner here, and I'm going to take uh, Devin Witherspoon. I think he'd be a nice fit there in that defense. Patrick Graham rolling him out, a lot of man coverage, booming. Devin Witherspoon is your number one guy. Lock him in there for the Las Vegas Raiders, who could desperately use some secondary help. It was not good, right? Uh, They need more help, no doubt. Plus, Rocky Ensign is a free agent as well. And we'll see if they re-sign him. Uh, On to the Atlanta Falcons. A lot of corners off the board. I think that leaves the Atlanta Falcons in an interesting spot. What do they do with Desmond Ritter? Well, you know what? What if Desmond Ritter isn't the guy? I like trying different possibilities. Desmond Ritter is someone where the Atlanta Falcons are, are in a very curious spot. Could they go quarterback in this draft? Because, I mean... They have enough firepower between Kyle Pitts and Drake London. They need a second guy at receiver, but they can find that in free agency and or the draft. Their defense needs a lot of work. There's no doubt about it. They've got a little bit of money to work with in cap cap situation-wise to be able to bring in some free agents on the defensive side. So I'm going to go after a quarterback here, and I'm going to go take Will Levis to be the guy for their quarterback because... 
hey, Will Levis has the tools. Arthur Smith, he's looking to win, man. This is year three for Arthur Smith. And Terry Fartnot, 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 Fartnot. Sorry, Terry, I'm, I'm butchering names. I'm, I'm a crazy person, so uh, pardon me. But uh, Fortnot is going to be looking for a quarterback as well. And maybe they don't feel confident. You know, there's a lot of smoke going on. I don't know if Marcus Mariota, or sorry, um, I think Marcus Mariota is going to be gone. But I don't think Desmond Ritter is the long-term answer just from watching him. I think he can be a solid quarterback, but we'll see how it goes. Maybe they go after a quarterback here and Will Levis with a lot more upside and tools and intangibles there that could be that franchise guy. Uh, Carolina here at number nine. They're in a spot now. It's like, oh, dang, all these quarterbacks are off the board. What are we going to do? Hopefully they get their car, right? And maybe they will. Maybe they will. Maybe they won't. Who knows? But uh, Carolina Panthers, at this point, to me, it comes down to a corner position. Or sorry, not corner. Uh, defensive line, edge-wise, interior defensive line even, because Matt Ioannidis is a free agent. Maybe you go get yourself a pair along with Derek Brown or, again, another edge rusher. Good possibility. Linebackers definitely a need for them. Offensive line, I think, is looking good. I did see Peter Skoronsky go to, in DJ Daniel Jeremiah's mock draft, which was interesting. Maybe plug you know Christensen over at center or something like that. But for the Panthers at this pick, I'm going to go and take a defensive lineman here with a lot of the defensive linemen still available. I'm going to go take that power. Uh, and actually, you know what? We're going to go after Miles Murphy. Where's Miles Murphy? He's somewhere around here. I know he's somewhere around here. Here he is, Miles Murphy. Tyree Wilson's still available, too. He'd be a nice one on their defensive line. I, I'm still going to go. Let's see, who's their defensive coordinator coming in? I forget who their defensive coordinator they hired. We'll go ahead and take Miles Murphy. I'm still a little higher on Miles Murphy than Tyree Wilson. I do think Wilson's a better day one player, though, but I think Murphy has a little bit more upside. Uh, on to the Eagles here at number 10 overall. And to me, Tyree Wilson falling down the board. I think he'd be a nice compliment with what they have because you've got your pass rushing specialist. I mean, more than specialist with Hassan Reddick, but you got some speed, right? I think now you get yourself that power end who can also play on the interior on, on rush packages and whatnot. And Tyree Wilson on that on that interior who could, like I said, play off the edge, base formations, and also slide on the inside, especially early on for them. Uh, on that defensive line because, hey, you could end up losing one of your best pass rushers in Javon Hargrave, so you might want to add some sort of pass rush to that defense line, which has been so good for them over the years. Tennessee Titans at the number 11 overall pick. It's, uh, you know, I love to change things up, but for me, the offensive lineman, you got to take one. I'm going to go after, I'm going to go Broderick Jones. I'm higher on Broderick Jones uh, and his upside, so I just think he, man, he could be one of the best left tackles in football. I do think Paris Johnson can be really, really good too. I think he could be one of the best left tackles. Uh, you know, his work ethic too is, you know, it seems like there, the intangibles, all those things with Paris Johnson, check the boxes. But I'm going to go and take uh, Broderick Jones, spicing it up a little bit. And here's the here's who we've taken so far. If you want to see on the bottom right there, some of those players we've gone after. It is kind of interesting how this all works with TDN. Maybe they can figure something out because I kind of like seeing you know it being available for everyone to take a look at but Houston number 12 overall we went after Bryce Young to get a quarterback and at this point I think they need defensive line talent you could go back to the offensive line and I say this getting a smaller quarterback I'd like to really get someone to help protect Bryce Young up the interior I think that's so so important and it, it definitely is something we need to look at but their defensive line also could really use some help now which defensive lineman do we go with I like Lucas Van Ness a lot but the offensive linemen here are are really tempting. I think I'm going to go Peter Skaronsky because I'm just a little higher. I feel good about Peter Skaronsky. Maybe move Kenyon Green, who has so much versatility, you know, coming out of Texas A&M. You can put Skaronsky at left guard, and then you have Green, the machine, over at right guard for the long term, or hey, Kenyon Green, I don't know, work something out. Somebody can play center. I'm just going to go take the best available player, and I think Peter Skaronsky could be that guy for them. Just feel really good about Skaronsky. He's a blue-chip player, and for a team that is rebuilding, that's kind of what you need at this point. On to the New York Jets at number 13 overall. This is another case where offensive line, we're seeing a big run on offensive linemen go, but I'm going to continue with this one. No change up for the Jets. I do like Bram Branch a lot. I think they need that sort of playmaking safety, and he could be the Jamie Ward of their defense. But at the end of the day, I think the offensive line has to be the priority. Protecting whatever quarterback comes in here is just so important. The Jets have been, it's been a menace for years with their offensive line. I mean, we thought we had it done, and maybe next year Mekhi Becton will get back healthy. I still am not ready to bank on that. Hopefully lose a little bit of weight and conditioning, you know, stuff like that. So maybe he can be a little lighter on his feet. But I'm going to take Paris Johnson Jr. for the Jets. Uh, New England Patriots, I also see them going maybe offensive line here. But I'm going to go and take the uh, first receiver off the board because I do think receiver is a huge need for them. But I can see them going after. Let me just take a look at the corners real quick because Joey Porter is there. You know, 
actually, I'm going to I'm going to shake things up. Maybe they get a tackle in free agency, right? You got free agency. They could keep Trent Brown around for right now. Maybe move him over to right tackle. Get yourself someone in free agency there at left tackle. I'm going to get Joey Porter, right? Because there's so many different options on what they can do. And I don't know if they're going to re-sign Jonathan Jones. So what about getting someone with some physical prowess to go along with Jack Jones and Marcus Jones and Joey Porter Jr.? That's a pick that I haven't made. And I just think it'd be kind of interesting. So I'm going to go ahead and rock that in there for the New England Patriots at number 15 overall. Uh, Green Bay Packers on the clock here at number, uh, what are we, 15? Oh, so pardon me, the Patriots at 14. Uh, Green Bay Packers at number 15. I think it comes down to another receiving weapon and prefer probably more of a tight end is where they're going to be looking at, especially in their scheme. Other areas they could be looking at, I think, is, you know, continue to go on the defense line. But hopefully Devontae Wyatt, year number two, will, will take a big impact. Uh, besides that, you know, I think safety, Brian Branch. So for me, it comes down to between Branch and a tight end. I am going to take Michael Mayer. I just think it's a bigger need for them. And I think Michael Mayer, it's very close, man. Him, him and... Uh, uh, Brian Branch, they're both blue chip type of players, but I'm going to go take Michael Mayer here at the number 15 overall pick for the for the Green Bay Packers. On to the Commanders at number 16 overall. It really, this is another one where do they re-sign Danny Johnson or what did they do in free agency at the cornerback position? They could definitely add some influx of talent. I think their offensive line though has to be the number one priority. What did they do? But you got to protect Sam Howell. If he is your quarterback, I'm protecting Sam Howell at all costs. That is the thing that I want to do. And in terms of which offensive lineman, let's take a look at the tackles real quick. You know what? We're going to, ooh, it is interesting. Do we take someone like Dewan Jones or do we go after maybe more of the safer, you know, just go with Osiris Torrance on that interior? You know, that is kind of an interesting one because you can move Samuel Cosme, I feel like, into guard and we could draft a Dewan Jones and put him at right tackle or an Antoine Harrison, even though I like Harrison more as a left tackle. But those are interesting options. And you know what? We're going to go take Dewan Jones here for the Washington Commanders at that right tackle position. And then you move Sammy Cosby into right guard and you kind of roll from there. You still need to find a Chase Roulier, maybe depending on what they decide to do with him. But for the time being, until we know more about that, I'm going to go take a right tackle and then plug Samuel Cosby in over to right guard. At number 17 for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And a lot of the corners off the board at this point. Now, don't get me wrong. There's still some good corners available and whatnot. Clark Phillips. Let's see. Cam Smith. More of a second round. These are some second round guys. Kelly Ringo. I am going to look at offensive line here. I think that's still the number one priority. And I am a believer in Antoine Harrison. Some people are higher on, on Darnell Wright. Just for me personally, I'm still with with Antoine Harrison. He's he's a guy who I think is going to give you some crazy. Uh, I think he can be one of the best left tackles in football as well. I think he has some shades of Laramie Tunsil to his game. I want to see him get a little bit stronger, no doubt about it, especially in the run game. That might be a bit of a weakness early on, but as a pass protector, this guy is going to be an absolute monster. He's just so freaking fluid, and his mirroring skills are unbelievable. Uh, Detroit Lions here at number 18 overall. Bijan Robinson is still available. Where will Bijan go, man? It's always difficult finding a fit for Bijan Robinson. But for the Detroit Lions, remember, we went after a corner and we got uh, Christian Gonzalez at number six overall. So at this point, you take a look at the board. And for me personally, I think we need to either go into your defensive line. Brian Brzee is my guy. And I, I just, can't, you know, there's some good players still available. Lucas Van Ness is still available. You could go after another edge rusher. He could also play on the interior for them. But I'm going to take Brian Brzee, someone who I think is going to have a really good NFL career. Just got to stay healthy. And that's why he falls because those injury concerns. Uh, Tampa Bay at number 19 overall. I am looking at this roster. It's between edge, linebacker. I think linebacker is more of a second round need for them at this point. Because you got to look forward to the future. Devin White maybe not be around long term. They could end up trading him too. I could see that into next year. And then, of course, Levante David, the free agent. Safety is an interesting spot. And that is where I'm going to go, actually, this time. I'm going to go take a versatile defender because, remember, Sean Murphy Bunting's a free agent. And you also have Mike Edwards as a free agent. Logan Ryan's a free agent. You know, likely they're going to re-sign somebody, right, or sign somebody in free agency. But Antoine Winfield is playing in the slot a ton for them. And just imagine having him and Brian Branch. They can work in the slot. They both have versatility to play in the slot, play deep. You have yourself a great, like, interchangeable safety group because, like I said, you, they could definitely use some help in the slot and in the back end. On to the uh, Seattle Seahawks here at number 20 overall. And we went after defense, and we went—no, sorry, we went quarterback, right? We changed it up. We went C.J. Stroud. 
which again will be something uh, I'm sure will get a little nod, a little talked about there, and that's fine. I think you change it up, do some different things, but at this point, I think you got to go and get some defensive help. And in terms of what areas do I think I would be looking at, interior defense line, pass rush. And with Lucas Van Nesh being available on the board, I think he gives you that power element to go along with a Boe Mafe and a Chino, uh, I mean, um, a Daryl Taylor. I mean, you still got a Chino Wosu, but Lucas Van Ness played a little early on in that five tag role, rolling on that defense. Baltimore Ravens on the clock. I think at this point, oh, Bijan Robinson still available. I would probably take Bijan if I were the Ravens at this point. But you got J.K. J.K. is great. Plus, I want to see Mel Kuyper have to quit. <laughs> I will retire if the Baltimore Ravens get Bijan Robinson. Is what he said. I believe he said that before with uh, what's his name, uh, Jimmy Clausen. If he wasn't, he was going to be a bust or whatever. Good old Mel Kuyper. Uh, Baltimore Ravens, though, here at this point, I think it's corner, receiver. And there's no receivers off the board at this point. So they get their pick and they're choosing. Which receiver do I like for them? I like Jackson Smith and Jigba. He's my number one guy in this class and just feel really, really good about his game. And Baltimore, they're a team that's tried to invest in these, you know, different type of receivers. Just go get yourself a stud. You know what I'm saying? Don't risk it too much for the biscuit. I, I'm a believer in that, but sometimes you got to go and take the talent. I think Jackson Smith is that guy. Uh, plus, you have your ex and Rashad Bateman, hopefully. Get a speed threat in free agency. On to the Bolts here, number 23 overall. And with the Bolts pick at this point, this is actually where I am going to be looking at taking a speed receiver as well. Another receiver off the clock, and it's going to be Quentin Johnston because this guy in this offense would be insane. This would be insanity. I'm just saying it right now. Quentin Johnston in this offense, as that deep, his acceleration and speed is just off the charts. If nothing else, if he's just a Z receiver for them, I'm okay with that. I'd let Justin Herbert throw those 50-50 deep balls to Quentin Johnston and be an absolute monster. On to number 24 here, the Minnesota Vikings. I'm looking at an interior defensive line. Uh, I think that's a big need for them. Their cornerback situation, hopefully Andrew Booth can be the guy. But, you know, it's just tough, man. It is tough because you still have Cameron Dantzler there. And you could upgrade from Cameron Dantzler. Don't get me wrong. I think slots, their biggest need. And maybe that's more of a second round thing. And you invested a lot in the secondary last year between Scene and Booth. So hopefully some of those guys can develop. I think also free agency is a big area for them to go after. Bring a vet in potentially. You know, Patrick Peterson leaving. So you're going to have to find someone else there. Uh, let's see. Who do I want to go after for the Vikings? I'm going to go after Bijan Robinson. And the reasoning for this, Dalvin Cook could be a guy who gets traded or cap casualty. We're experimenting with different ideas. I think the Vikings could look at Bijan Robinson with Kirk Cousins still under contract. They're trying to find that identity. Alexander Madison remembers a free agent as well. So their running back room could be a little dicey. So I'm going to go take Bijan Dijon Robinson here at number 24 overall. I'm curious to see how the Viking fans are seeing on that one. I don't know, man. I mean, I don't hate it. I don't love it at the same time, but... I think B. John Robinson is just too good of a player not to take a 24, so I'm loving it, man. I'm loving it. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Jacksonville's on the clock at number 25 overall. And for me at this point, I do think corner is a huge need for them. And there's still some really good corners available. I mean, not a huge need. Don't get me wrong. Doris Williams can still play. He can play on the outside with Tyson Campbell. And maybe you work at finding a slot. And that's something you could look at later. I do think maybe you need a more of an outside guy. Uh, other areas, though, tight end. There's some good guys available here for them. And with uh, um, uh, Mark, or not Mark Ingram, Evan Ingram talking and talking, saying, hey, I want this big amount of change. I'm going to go take a tight end for them. And I'm going to go take a receiving threat in Dalton Kincaid for the Jacksonville Jaguars at that number 25 overall pick. Number 26, New York football Giants receiver, receiver, receiver. Offensive line, though, John Michael Schmitz, you know, we go receiver all the time. You know, they need an offensive line for sure, but I think receiver is just such a big need that it's like, yo, I, you know, I can't, you know, I can't overlook it. I think Jordan Addison is a, a guy who, so versatile, play on the outside, great separator, and can be that dude, can be that. I don't know, uh, Mari, uh, you know, Mari Cooper, different mold, different build, or Stephon Diggs of this offense, should I say. Maybe that's a little bit more relevant with Brian Dable. On to the Dallas Cowboys, number 27 overall. And with this one, I think they need someone on that interior. And this is something where I haven't done this, but I'm going to look at a big fella on the interior and someone that I think could be a possible sneaky first-round pick, Mozzie Smith. 
out of Michigan, the Wolverine coming to town here, be that nose tackle for this Dallas Cowboys defense of a line and help out Micah Parsons on the edge and the law and Dorrance Armstrong and you know Sam Williams and company there. Other areas, of course, you're still looking outside corner. I think that's a big need for them and I think more realistically, but we're trying different possibilities, of course. Number 28, Buffalo Bills, trying different possibilities, right? Uh, what possibilities could go? Safety is something I still like for them, of course. But let's see, some sneaky needs besides the offensive line. I mean, the offensive line to me is just such a big need that I can't ignore it. You know what I mean? It's one of those areas. I can't ignore it. I'm going to go with the boring pick. I mean, we could go with a tackle, too, because, they haven't, you know, Darnell Wright's available. He could plug into right tackle. Let's let's do it. Let's do that, man. Let's go take Darnell Wright here at left tackle for the Buffalo Bills. And then you can figure out a guard maybe in free agency or something. Maybe Trent Spencer Brown a guard. Who knows? Uh, I think... Ideally, you get an interior player and then you bring in a free agent at right tackle to compete with Spencer Brown. That's what I would do. But again, we're trying something different. Darno Wright also can play guard, remember? He can play guard. He's played guard. He has experience there. Uh, he's got experience basically like what, four positions besides center. So uh, Cincinnati Bengals on the clock here. Number 29 overall. What do we do? Offensive line, big area of a need, right? Yeah, potentially, absolutely. Right tackle. Let's see what tackles are available now. Ooh, we got some tackles off the board at this point. Maybe we go somewhere different. Let's take a look at the big board and see how things are shaking up. If there's any player that looks interesting to us, and oh, I got I got a name out here, but I'm I'm gonna go with Nolan Smith. He to me is a really really good player. Gives him some speed, something to be a good complement there with Trey Henderson and Sam Hubbard on the outside. New Orleans Saints at number 29, or sorry, 30 overall, pardon me. I'm used to saying 29 overall because the Miami Dolphins, but in this, it actually goes over that pick. But for the uh, New Orleans Saints here at pick number 30, I am looking at either interior defensive line, which I've gone Kalaja Kansi last week, so we're going to change things up. I do like that pick a lot, but they need some interior defensive line. It's really, really thin. Is there anybody that I would take other than Kalaja Kansi there? Eh, probably not. Let's see any edge hybrids that we could take on the defensive line. Eh, probably wait on that. Edge rusher, maybe Marcus Davenport. They let him go. It's a possibility. Uh, receiver, I think they're good. I think you, you either get someone in the mid round. I think you get someone in the mid rounds there to be a good compliment. But you got Chris Olave and Rashid Shahid. I- I'm looking at either even a running back here, and I'm going to go after Jameer Gibbs. Going to be the play here from me. Someone to be that Alvin Kamara replacement for them in the long haul. Give you that electric, explosive speed and receiving threat capabilities. Bill Adelphia Eagles on the clock. And remember, here's the board and what we've been able to do so far. We got Tyree Wilson, a steal, if there ever was one, I think, at number 10 overall. Now, look, I'm not top five Tyree Wilson hype. I think he's being mocked like to the Eagles, or sorry, to the Seahawks just because it's like, yo, we got to find a guy here. I think he's more of a, a 10 to 15 player in terms of like where I would put him on a big board or whatever. But, you know, again, needs and stuff like that. Edge position being a positional value sort of thing. They get pushed up a little bit. Eagles on the clock here at this number 31 overall pick. I think safety, a big area or a corner, right? So let's just go take a look and see who the best available uh, player is between those two positions. You actually know what? We're changing things up. We're changing things up because uh, uh, Isaac Samalu, free agent. Well, let's go Osiris Torrance. He can be their Brandon Brooks replacement basically of the future, right? And I mean, Isaac Samalu replacement in other words, but he kind of gives you some vibes of Brandon Brooks. And I think that'd be a fun pick for them. Something that I've never done before for them. But you know they go offense and defensive lines. That's a Howie Roseman philosophy thing. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to go and listen and take Osiris Torrance on the offensive line. Wow, that's a, I kind of like that the more I think about it, actually. Uh, Chiefs here need offensive tackle. They could use an edge rusher. I, I think with the tackles being off the board at this point, uh, I'm going to go look at an edge rusher here, and there's still some really, really good ones available. The dude that I'm looking at here, so the person here that I am going to be taking is, I had a little camera malfunction there, but we're good. We're back. We're back on line. <laughs> but the person I'm going to be taking here is going to be uh, BJ Ojolari. I think BJ Ojolari is going to sneak into that first round. Very, very young player. I don't even think he's 21 yet. Will McDonald's really good too. Gives you that freak athlete ability. But uh, save my draft. That's ah, okay. We'll be good with it. I don't I don't want to see it again now. 
Oh, man. Oh, it's okay. I think we did a decent job. It was, hey, we're shaking it up a little bit. It's not like something that maybe I would do you know, all the time, but it's good to see different possibilities and what could happen in this draft. And it's a little one-round, no-trades action fun that I, I wanted to bring today. So here's the recap of the draft. Let me know. Uh, definitely hit me up on some of the weird picks that I did in this draft. Really different picks, right? Quarterback destinations were kind of... Uh, something that's going to be unique, right? Something that's very unique, but I thought we found some good fits too. So some picks that I'd say I look back on as, I don't know if I'd do that again, but I, there were also some fits where I think, oh, that's a that's a fun fit and something new. And one of my favorite picks actually in this draft was Osiris Torrance to the Eagles. I thought that was kind of a fun one, but anyway, I don't know. Uh, let me know what you think. I'm go curious to go watch this Broshmo and uh, the rest of the Broshmo and uh, Bengal video. So the Bengal versus the bro, the Bengal versus the bear, big bad bear. I love Broshmo and Bengal, but hope it was a really good day. My name is G-Sling. I'm doing my thing. I'll talk to you later.